Anything else? I think the rest are piles of junk. I don't know if there's anything actually on the tables. Oh, there is! Uh, wow. There's actually a lot. <laughs> a lot of stuff on the tables and whatnot. So we'll check those too. This is, this is probably got to be one of my favorite secrets in Fallout 2. Is this, this fella back here just hiding out, being Eldritch's little secret. Very good at what he does. Oh, a fridge. Oh, electronic lockpick. The, a Watts Electronics ma Micro Manipulator Finger Stuff Electronic Lockpick for defeating electronic locks and security devices. And some... Oh, I can't even pick these up. <laughs> Sulik, please carry some things since you ran right up to me. We've got a comment from Enclave Milkman Nick Lost. That's a pretty great name. Hey Kato, love the series. Here's a question for you though. If Bethesda added a character in their next game being a reference to you, how would you react? Uh, well, I would be honored. <laughs> First and foremost, that's the only thing that really springs to mind. Uh, I don't, I don't feel like I deserve it in any sort of way. So that's, I, there would be a lot of disbelief and feeling honored kind of thing. Thank you for the question, Enclave Milkman Nick Lost. Let's go back in this fridge. Get those nades and so those small energy cells. Oh, there's it's just a one-way path here. Gotta shove Sulik so much. I'm sorry, Sulik. I'm sorry for being so pushy. But you got too close. Algernon over here making making a bunch of sound effects. Oh, there's a bookshelf here too in the corner. Hey. So much good stuff in here, dude. Okay, now let's speak to the man of the hour, Algernon. The slack-jawed young man looks at you with a toothless smile. Stitched on his shirt is a small tag that says Algernon in cursive letters. Boom! When he sees your weapons, he starts pointing at them excitedly. Boom! Do you want to see one of these weapons? What do you want to give him? Mmm, give him one of my melee weapons. I'll give you my Beatco Big Frigger Power Fist. Al takes the item and his eyes light up. He tinkers with it for a few minutes, then a few minutes more, then a few minutes more. An hour later, Al hands it back to you with a nod and an evil smile. Boom. Thanks, Al. So, Algernon over here just upgraded my Power Fist to its better variant, the Mega Power Fist, for free. The merchant above takes advantage of Algernon in this way and uh, forces people to pay money for weapon upgrades uh, but i think i think this is the only way to actually upgrade a power fist is by going directly to algernon because usually it's just firearms that the, that the merchants deal with so now compared side to side <laughs> we go from 12 to 27 damage to 20 to 43 damage with the mega power fist and Another, another little pro tip about, about using Algernon to upgrade your weapons. Um, he will fill them up with ammo as well. So if you give him an empty weapon of any kind, it will come back uh, fully ammoed up. So you'll, you'll basically just get free ammo out of it too. So I'm going to make him upgrade or ask him to upgrade my Power Fist again because I have another one. Algernon looks at you and gives a toothless smile. Boom! Yeah, boom to you too, Algernon. Can you upgrade any of these things I have here? He takes the item, his eyes light up, blah, blah, blah. Boom! Thanks, Al. So, now I have two Mega Power Fists and a whole bunch of extra small energy cells to boot. Wonderful. I'll trade with Sulik really quick. I almost want to give Sulik the other Power Fist. <laughs> almost. I'm going to give him all my small energy cells. I'm going to give him all my money too, just so I can, I can access my money easier at the top of my inventory. Um, yeah, I think we're good there. Pretty sweet, right? What else can we upgrade? I wonder if I can upgrade Cassidy's sniper rifle. I don't, I can't upgrade the sniper rifle. I was I was under the impression that I, that I think the sniper rifle is the ultimate version of itself. <laughs> but if I do come across anything like, I don't know, a, a plasma rifle, or something to that of that nature 
I can bring them down here for Algernon and he can give me the upgraded variant, the Turbo Plasma for Marcus to use. Marcus would be wonderfully powerful with the, with the Turbo Plasma. So now we leave. The dogs didn't get too upset. And I don't think the new Reno Arms dude, <laughs> despite my companions walking through his whole building, cares at all. Nope, he does not. Cool. Well, that's awesome. So we've got the part that we need, and we managed to upgrade to our Mega Power Fist. I call this a win. I should give the rifle back to Cassidy, though. Just so he has something to use. Here you go, bud. Um, and our car is over here. I accidentally walked out of the exit grid. <laughs> anyway, I was going to say our, par our car is parked here instead of in the front of the city. It, it has different parking spots around the city, not just out front, which is really nice. So I'm going to head out. Back to Vault 13. We need to take care of that immediately. So that's what we're going to do. Hit the Vault 13 button. Hope you don't encounter anything dangerous or scary. Even though I do want to use that power fist. Nope. No encounters. Awesome. Vault 13 proper. Yep. You already said that, Marcus. This is where it all started. Let me talk to Gruthar again. He says, hello, Kato. Have you found the part for the machine? Yes. Here it is. He says, thank you. Please go to the control room and replace the module. Consider it done. Big old death claw, buddy. We'll go in here and go up to or down down to level three and see if we can install the voice module with no problem. I wonder if Jimmy can assist with it. Maybe, maybe I can do it from the terminal. Hello, terminal. You install the module in the terminal. The system is repaired. Wow. Just like that. So, okay, <laughs> you fixed it. Let Gruthar know that you fixed the computer. Okay, cool. <laughs> that was it. All right. Let's go back to the back to the first floor. That was a bit anticlimactic. I didn't get a doo doo for experience, but I, I don't think I get experience until I talk to Gruthar again. So. Something about the A's and the O's in this game, the Fallout font. It makes it really hard to tell the difference. Anyway, Gruthar says, you have restored my faith in humans. I thank you for all that you have done for the pack. Is there something that I can do for you in return? You said that you would let me know if you found a Gek here. Did you locate one? He says, yes. There was a Gek in the vault storage room. It is yours, with many thanks. Thank you. Yay! Hey, <laughs> I got 9,000 experience just now. Holy crap. Wait. Oh, he just handed it to me. Okay, well, I am going to go to the vault storage room, though. That was a ton of experience all at once. Uh, I think they just wanted to, to, like, guarantee that you would get enough experience. Oh, here's the second floor. Nobody really saw this floor yet. <laughs> Let's talk to this, this NPC. I remember him being a little interesting. He says, Welcome, traveler. I am called Gordon, and I am the Shrine Keeper. What can I help you with? It's a pleasure to meet you, Gordon. I'm Kato. Can I ask some questions? He says, certainly you may. Who is this shrine dedicated to? He says, the shrine is dedicated to the unnamed hero known only as the Vault Dweller. He or she was the savior of all who lived here several decades ago. We do not know what became of our savior, but he or she lives on in our minds and hearts. Very commendable, Gordon. Very commendable, Gordon. Can I ask you some more questions? Um, how long have you been here? Gordon says, I have lived all my life here in this vault. I have been Shrine Keeper for most of the of those years. Then, were you here when the Death Claws took over? He says, no, my friend, I was not. I left a few months ago to visit the statue of the Vault Dweller erected in the central court of the NCR. When I returned to the Vault, I found the Death Claws were already here. Needless to say, I was in shock. However, I am convinced that they are not responsible for what happened to my fellow citizens. If, by chance, you want more information on this matter, you can seek out Goris in the library. I'll keep that in mind. Why do you stay here? He says, my place is here at the shrine. I will not leave it willingly. Your dedication is admirable. Okay, thanks, Gordon. A little bit more context to why this person is here. Uh, but there's there's not much, not really much up here. Um, there's, there's a depressed dude 
and uh, their their prisoner, Matt, who tried to sabotage the vault. Um, you can take a path of like leaving with with their prisoner and making all the death claws mad. But why would I do that? <laughs> it came here to help them out, not cause problems. Dark Ira asks, with the snow piling up around me, I've been wondering, do you enjoy the snow? And if you do, what's your favorite thing to do out in the snow? Uh, younger me would have plenty of examples of fun things to do in the snow. It, when I went to youth group, we had uh, on at least one occasion gone on a snow trip up to Mount Rainier, where we just went to a spot on Mount Rainier to play in the snow. And there was a, a massive incline that we would climb up and then just fall off of <laughs> any anybody who's uh i don't know above the age of 17 um probably wouldn't find that very fun because uh you generally worry about injuring yourself whereas self-preservation wasn't really the first thought uh for most of us in youth group so that was a lot of fun none of us got heavily injured I think that's the memory that sticks pretty well. As an adult though, like once you hit the point to where you've driven in the snow and had to get from point A to point B while it's snowing, it's not it's not so much fun anymore. <laughs> As I'm sure many who are watching can also attest to. So thank you for the question. The Burning One asks, have you ever watched A Boy and His Dog? No, unfortunately I have not watched it yet. Um, there are several post-apocalyptic movies um, one one dystopian movie that I have watched, um, not recently, probably a couple months ago now, was Brazil. Um, that one, if you're into dystopian flicks, that one is a wild ride. Um, it is older, obviously, but uh, I'm pretty sure A Boy and His Dog and like the original Mad Max trilogy are at this point too. But um, like I haven't seen A Boy and His Dog, but I I do want to watch it at some point. So thank you for the for the reminder burning one once we get outside we've helped out the death claws of vault 13 hopefully we'll find the vault 13 residents too since they were captured by the enclave but we've got to go back to to the village to save it we have the geck we should read it too shouldn't we the garden of eden creation kit this unit is standard equipment for all Vault Tech vaults. A Gek is the resource for rebuilding civilization after the bomb. Just add water and stir. If only it were that simple. If only. <laughs> I did say in one of the other one of the comment answering things that uh, the Gek the Gek is used as a as a MacGuffin for anything the plot really needs a plot convenience item, which is very true. Uh, same with FEV and things existing because of FEV. Um, and I'm okay with it. It's a video game. Treat it as such. <laughs> I'm gonna read these books really quick. Raise my repair and outdoorsman. And then do our level up. 26 skill points to use. Oh my goodness. I want more big books of science. I think I'll just hold on to... No, um, we'll do... a few points into unarmed. Because we, we're still getting negative modifiers. But now... Oh, Cassie's overloaded for some reason. <laughs> Probably because he took his armor off. Let's go back to Arroyo. Hope that everything's going swell over there. Even though Hakunin was definitely doom and gloom. A family of rad scorpions. Let's punch them. Let's see how strong my punch is now. I'll punch you in the brain. 24 hit points. Brain. 36 hit points. And was killed. I can punch another one. Here I go. Brain. That one was one shot. <laughs> Critically in the brain for 52 hit points. Strong. Spiking the brain to the floor. Man, what an image. What an image. Spike! And then the, bla the brain just... All over the floor. That's how I imagine it anyway. <laughs> just kicking the scorpion up in the air. 
spiking it. Lovely. Man, we're hitting pretty hard. <laughs> Knocked it senseless. These move in AP, though. So good. I think that was three kills in one turn. By me. They are just rad scorpions. Like, we're pretty powerful at this point. Uh, why isn't Marcus doing anything? Or Cassidy, for that matter. Are you guys brain dead? Are you boys having trouble? Can I... I'm gonna shove you. I'm gonna do what I want. I'm gonna do what I want, Marcus. Get you guys to move or something. Ah. <laughs> or Sulik's gonna do all the... There we go. Oh no, you blew up Sulik. Oh no. Is that what you meant by not pushing you, Marcus? Is that... What you just take out all your rage on Sulik? For 154 HP. Well. <laughs> we need to start this trip over. Thanks, Marcus. Thank you. For reminding me that you need an energy weapon instead. <laughs> oh, that's so terrible. Okay. Let's get out of town, or get out of Vault 13 vicinity. And manage some inventory a little bit here. Against All Odds asks two questions. What is your favorite Easter eggs and or references in any games? And what is your... No, this is three questions. Against All Odds. <laughs> That's too many. What is your first reference you ever noticed in Fallout? I would probably say like the TARDIS or the Bridge Keeper encounter, which we already had in this playthrough. Uh, the TARDIS is in Fallout 1. Um... What you're asking me to recall is difficult for me because I don't have the best memory for especially gameplay. If it's in like it's if it's even in a Let's Play episode, if it's a very specific thing, a lot of you have probably watched these and experienced these a lot more recently than I have. Um, so I yeah, that's the best I can. My memory sucks is the answer to your question. <laughs> My memory is bad. Thank you against all odds. It's actually a good thing that I decided to do this because I forgot that I left my microfusion cells on Sulik. So now the car is charged with more power. We're at 57%. We were running on fumes, on those nuclear fumes. That's how it works, right? Just like gasoline. <laughs> I'm not a nuclear physicist, old man. Uh, okay. This is a uh, scarred traveler. I don't think anybody's got their weapons out, so we're we're good there. Hello, Scarred Traveler. She says, I've heard good things about a person fitting your description. I guess it would be all right to trade some of our cargo with you. Here's what I got. Ooh. Barter time. She has gold, jet, and a little bit of, little bit of money. Nope. Nope. I'm good. Thanks, though. That would be a Redding Caravan, I believe. Because Redding trades in gold. Let's keep going. Let's go back to Arroyo. We need to get back and make sure Hakunin is taking his meds. And not just, not just those medicinal plants. <laughs> or whatever he, he decided to imbibe. Uh, these are centaurs. They don't look too dangerous. <laughs> I'm going to get some nades ready and approach the centaurs. My teammates aren't attacking yet. So I will move myself a little bit. And grenade! Heh <laughs> It didn't do that much. And grenade again! It, it did not do that much. <laughs> okay, these things are highly resistant to grenades. Good to know. Let's go over here. Teammates? Are you going to start attacking? No? I may have to shove them again. Special thanks to my Wasteland Legends, Sven and David Hoover, and thanks to the rest of my patrons on screen now. You can catch future episodes of this playthrough on Wednesdays and Fridays, noon and 10 a.m. Pacific. Thanks for watching. I'm Kato Genesis, and may you wander the wasteland like you own it.